the oceans, 71% of the Earth's surface. Their vast, cool emptiness absorbs more than 90% of the heat trapped by our greenhouse gas emissions, principally carbon. But we are breaking the seas. Since 2015, we've had the hottest five years on record. That is the hottest five years humans have ever recorded. And so this isn't just coincidence or happenstance. This is actually a trend. It's the equivalent of five or six Hiroshima bombs going off in the oceans every second of every day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. That's how much heat we are dumping into the ocean. The world's oceans are now warming eight times faster in the past 25 years than in the previous 25. This very graphic graphic charts warming seas from 1940 on the left, moving to around 2000 when the average warming level is first exceeded and onwards and ever upwards till now. This data was published just this week in the Advances in Atmospheric Sciences journal. The temperature trends in the ocean are telling us a very devastating story, and that's a story that's been going on for decades, and we're seeing the repercussions now. If you look at the year-to-year -year or decade-to-decade -decade temperatures, they are just going up, and there's, there, it's an unabated rise. And here's why it matters so much. Oceans are the engines of our weather. Heating them alters weather patternings globally, deeping extremes of drought, hence the catastrophic fires from the US to Russia and to Australia. And it's causing more powerful storms and floods. This was Storm Desmond in Cumbria five years ago. And this summer, we saw a record number of Atlantic tropical storms. The more you warm the water, the more dramatically that uh, moisture content increases. So these storms have far more moisture within them to turn into record rainfall amounts. And again, it's not a coincidence that here in the United States, over the past few years, we've seen the two biggest flooding events on record. And just this week, it was revealed that Turkey's three biggest cities, including Istanbul, ravaged by drought, could run out of drinking water in a matter of weeks. Moreover, within the oceans themselves, heating is an ecological time bomb. From killing and bleaching out coral reefs, like the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, to the hidden killer, heating surface water interferes with cold water welling up vital nutrients from the deep. And of course, heated water means expanded water, meaning sea level rise. We're on course for a one metre rise in global sea levels by the end of the century, threatening tens of millions of people. We've got 10 years to bring carbon emissions globally down by a factor of two. It's a monumental challenge if we're to avert uh, e even more catastrophic warming, warming of more than a degree and a half Celsius. It is true, COVID has caused a record 7% fall in our carbon emissions, but that's nothing in the scale of global oceanic heating. It won't even register against the enormity of what our carbon output is now doing to our oceans, and so to our weather, and so to our marine life, and so to our coasts, and so to us. Now hundreds of thousands of small businesses which were forced to close